And welcome back, everybody. Hands on apologetics. Well, you know, it's interesting to see how things uh, things uh, continue throughout history, like the rainbow. You know, the rainbow is rooted in salvation history. It's also part of virtue signaling today. And so we're going to explore the depths of the biblical background of the rainbow and its implications today with our good friend Steve Ray. Steve, as you know, well-known Catholic uh, apologist, author, speaker, he's written several awesome books like Crossing the Tiber, Upon This Rock, St. John's Gospel. He, you're probably familiar also with his Footprints of God video series, and you could check out all of his great stuff at catholicconvert.com. And Steve, welcome back to Hands on Apologetics. Thank you, Gary. I got my bird T-shirt on, to, sweatshirt on today. It's a little chilly in the house, so um, that's a, oh. we're watching birds. This is our new house, our back window here. So I got nice. my bird shirt on today. Yeah, I was uh, I was thinking you're probably birding out there and yeah, you know, checking out. Any cool finds so far? Oh yeah, we got an eastern phoebe. It's put a nest right near us, so we're watching those. They're oh. bug eaters. I love bug eaters. They keep them off of us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, well, yeah, this rainbow, I thought since it's the month of June and we're all sick and tired of this whole pride month thing, uh, you know, mothers only get one day a year and fathers get one day a year, but the whole LGBT, they want a whole month to proclaim their stuff. Anyway, but a rainbow is, I would like to, as we go along, talk about the physical aspects of a rainbow, what it actually is, and also about the biblical meaning for it, how it's been viewed in history by other cultures, and um, how it's being co-opted by um, movements today, unfortunately. So, But the rainbow is a very interesting thing, and it's um, it always represents new beginnings, hope, peace, reconciliation. And um, it, it symbolizes everything positive and beautiful. It was originally, I think that when God created the universe, the rainbow was already there. But after the flood, when God promised he would never destroy the earth with water again, he didn't say he'd never destroy the earth or punish us again, just not with water, not with a flood. Um, I think personally that the rainbow was always there because it's a physical aspect of light, but it right. was given a new significance that after that, and when do we see a rainbow after a rainstorm, after a cloudburst, after a thunderstorm, that's when we see a rainbow. So I think that God used that rainbow to say, every time you see a storm, don't worry, I'm not going to flood the earth again. And you will see my bow in the clouds. And it has this new significance now for you that the rainbow is actually a sign of God's promise, uh, a covenant with Noah. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a covenantal sign, which is interesting, you know, Yes. because uh, covenantal signs usually are something, uh, they're artifacts, they're made. It's not just a natural phenomenon. Right. And, and <clears throat> the rainbow is. It is. And I think it, uh, there was a rainbow right from the first day of creation, but it was given a new significance now from God. And actually, you know, when I when we were kids, we always hear the story of the rainbow. The Bible says there's a rainbow. But actually, the word rainbow is never used in the Bible. It is only bow, B-O-W. And it's the context that tells you whether it's a bow, like a bow and arrow, that a warrior would use, or whether it is a rainbow. So the context determines what the meaning of it is. Now, so it's a Hebrew word, cassette. It's with a Q, cassette. And it, almost every time in the Bible refers to a hunting bow, which is one of the main weapons of war among Israel in the ancient times. They didn't have tanks and machine guns. They ran around with swords and bows and arrows. And... Um, in the uh, there's other cultures, for example, the Norse that was up in the northern Europe area, the Norse viewed it as a bridge to heaven, the bridge for ancestor descend to the earth from Japan because they have this ancestor worship. So they viewed the rainbow as a bridge where their ancestors could come back and forth. The Navajo Indians thought it was a pathway of the spirits, that the spirits leave the pathway. Kind of like an airplane flying through the sky, they leave a trail behind them. Mm. And um, so the, the Navajo thought that that was kind of a path that was made by the spirits. In Greek mythology, 
Iris is a personification of the rainbow linking the gods with humanity. So it always is this heavenly aspect to it. It's like a road or a pathway. Um, of course, and the Irish always think that there's a pot of gold at the other end of it. So I'm one quarter Irish, so I'm always chasing the rainbow around. And then there's even a song, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. So, it, <laughs> you know, it plays a big part and it always has played a big part of mythology and religion and spirituality in many different cultures. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. So it's all the tie-ins uh, connecting heaven and earth in some way. Um, yep. But, you know, it's interesting. Hebrew culture, it's a little different, though, because of that close association with a weapon, you know? Yes. And, and so what they, um, I quote here again, against this background, the rainbow takes on an added significance as a departure from Near Eastern notions of a warlike deity. The symbol of divine hostility has been transformed into a token of reconciliation between God and man. So the ancients always viewed it as a weapon that may be a war like gods. This was their bow in the clouds. So you don't mess with the gods or they'll pick up the bow and come after you. <laughs> but for it, but in biblical terms, it actually is a reconciliation between God and man and his promise or covenant that he would never again destroy the earth with a flood. So you get the view that after the flood, God took that bow and he hung it up in the heavens and said, I won't take it down to use against you again. So that's, the, the, in fact, it's the word bow. The hunting bow is the one the word used in Genesis here. And it's it gives you the image of um, after the storm, God takes his bow and he hangs it up on the wall. He hangs it up on the sky and he won't take it up to use it against us again in that way. Yeah, at least as far as water. <laughs> yes, a lot of water. Because we know at the end he's going to destroy with fire. There's going to be yep. fire and there's going to be other means of destruction, but at least not ever again by the floods, water and floods. Well, it's, it's so that whole idea of the bow and um, you see the flood, you see the um, rainbows after the storm. So it's always like God is reminding you, my bow is still hanging. I haven't picked it up to come after you again. Okay. Yeah. So you, a, there's a natural association with water and, uh, yep. and you, so you get the covenant sign after a rain shower. Right. Yes. And that's a, a very appropriate time to have it. Yeah. It's almost as if God set it up that way. <laughs> yep. It's, it's, he set it up. He set his bow up there in the clouds. Actually, absolutely. Now, there. one of the interesting things about it, I'm looking for my, I want to say this correctly here, is that he, um, the rainbow is not a, a real thing. It's an illusion. It's light. So obviously you can't go and grab it. You can't pull it down out of the sky and go feel it or anything like that. And what it is, is it's when the, I found this very interesting myself when I was looking this up. It was a whole LGBT thing that made me get interested in the rainbow because I want, in a way, let me start by saying this. We'll talk about the LGBT thing later at the next segment or something. But the what the rainbow actually is, it has to, you have to have the light behind you. The sun has to be behind you and water, drops of water coming down in front of you. That's the position where it has to be. So anytime there's a rainbow, you can know the sun is behind and the, and the rain is coming in front of you. And what happens is the light from the rain, uh, sun goes into the drops of water and it reflects off the back of the drop of the water. So just imagine it goes into the raindrop and then it turn, bounces off the inside of the raindrop and then comes back out again. And when it comes back out again, it's what they call refraction of light. It, for the human eye, it splits light into its various colors. And there's seven of them. But interestingly enough, the LGBT flag only has six. So we'll talk about that in a minute, the difference between seven and six in biblical terms as well. Okay, And so that, that light actually bounces off the back of the raindrop, comes back out, hits the front part of the raindrop, and is refracted or split, the light is. And so you see it with these seven colors. Now, if, it's, if you do it in gray, if you take the color away, there's no, there's no bands. The bands are there in color. We see them. And even the eye is amazing because... When that light then reflects and comes in and hits our eye, 
it's transformed into electronic signals by the olfactory nerve taken into the brain and our brain then in a sense re images that rainbow or whatever we see even looking at your picture here on on uh, Skype I'm not I'm just light is going into my eye light rays are going in the olfactory nerve sends an uh, electronic signal up to my brain and my brain then interprets those lights as your image so I, I, we are so incredibly made God has made us so incredible and the whole rainbow there's sometimes you see a second rainbow and that it, oh and by the way they it has to be at a 42 degree angle 41 degree angle you're not going to see the rainbow 40 degree angle you know it's got to be a 42 degree angle the sun hitting the raindrops and sometimes you see two and that one's at a 52 degree angle would be the second rainbow that you see i've seen i think everybody's seen it sometimes a double rainbow but the the precision of god's universe and i think he gets great pleasure from that we talked about me watching birds the hummingbird this tiny little thing can zip around go fly backwards upwards up and down hover his wings i think 770 beats a minute a second if you can comprehend that his when there's a hummingbird near he goes you can hear him mm -hmm. i think god gets great pleasure out of that bird you know god made all of creation for us to enjoy but i have to believe that he enjoys it too and when it says in, the, in like in isaiah in the psalms the trees clap their hands the everybody all nature praises god how does a hummingbird praise god how does a rainbow praise god it does exactly what god planned it to do and when the rainbow is there as god created it it's praising its creator just like the hummingbird and i think god gets great pleasure out of seeing both of those things that he has made and with the great precision of his artist's mind. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, it, you know, you always read in the Psalms and other places in scripture about, you know, uh, the heaven and earth praising the Lord. Uh, that's a beautiful worldview and uh, a distinctive theistic worldview, right? I, it's, yep. it's hard for me to wrap my mind around if I were an atheist, what I would make of all, you know, the beauty that's around us. It, it would just be accidental, I guess. <laughs> well, I, I've often said, and I know you would agree with this, that it takes a lot more faith for an atheist than it does for a Christian. In other words, you really have two alternatives. Either everything came into existence by chance, that matter and energy is eternal and it all got here by chance, or it got here by a designer. Yeah, we've heard a lot in the last couple of years about follow the science mm -hmm. and that Christianity is contrary to science, that we, science and Christianity are enemies, so to speak, that we're against science and follow the science, which is really just a political statement to do whatever the uh, people who are in charge want you to do. But the reality is, is that, it was Christianity that invented science the way we know it today, modern science, because you, it, God created the universe in a beautiful and orderly structure. It has mathematical significance to it. Everything is mathematics in the universe and everything like even the rainbow at 42 degree angle. And so on. it's, it's science is precision. And because we Christians are really the ones that championed it and began modern science. So it was because we said that there's an intelligent creator who made things in a certain reasonable, rational way with certain natural laws incorporated into his universe. And then he made us creatures like himself. We made us in, our Im in his image. God is rational. We're rational. God can create. We can create. God makes beautiful things. We can recognize those beautiful things. And the early scientists said that what science really is, is thinking God's thoughts after him. In other words, we try to think from the created thing. We try to think back what God must have been thinking or how he created or how he made these things. So we're, by studying science, we're actually in the image of God, looking at the world, recognizing that an intelligent creator made it. Therefore, we can have an intelligent perspective of that universe that he's made. Now, 
it's not Hinduism or Buddhism or atheism that comes up with science. It was Christianity because of the worldview that we're made in the image of God and that God is a rational being who made a rational universe. The other religions and isms didn't come up with science. It was Christianity that did. And I, we also often get accused, us uh, Catholics and Christians, as being you are faith people. You don't believe in reason and science. You just have faith. Well, of course, we have faith because we under, uh, faith is an understanding of how things came about. It's a way we know or we believe things happen. I think it takes far more faith to be an atheist, to think that a hummingbird got here by chance. What are the chances of randomness plus time plus energy creating a hummingbird or creating the rainbow? What are the chances of this happening? The, the, it's impossible to have that happen. And many people become Christians or at least theists because they realize that there's no way that time plus chance plus matter and energy can come up with all of the things like you and I are communicating with one another. We create, we have love. What is love? You know, if I came, if I'm an atheist, to be honest, and I, I don't believe in God, if I'm an atheist and I came home and I I had loved my wife, but what is love? Love is for an atheist really just reduced to chemicals, to hormones, to electronics. And if I come home and say to my wife, I'm having a hormonal reaction for you, I'm not going to get the response I want. <laughs> and I said that to my wife and she says, you bet your body. <laughs> so we as Christians, we believe that love is something that is a quality or, or an attribute of a personal infinite God who has always been love and he made us in his image. Therefore we can love like he does for an atheist. You don't have any of that. So it takes a whole lot more faith to be an atheist and to get up in the morning and think you have value and importance that all this came here by chance. That takes a whole lot more faith than it does for me to say, I believe there's a creator who's a wonderful artist and he made all of this and made us in his image so that we can enjoy and understand and appreciate it with him. So it just all goes back to the rainbow. The rainbow is such a precision. It praises God just by existing. And it has seven bands of color that our eyes see. Seven, as we know, is the perfect number. Seven days of the week, seven sacraments, seven archangels. You go through the Bible, seven is very significant. When God makes an oath with us, he sevens himself. That's how important that word seven is. It even is how God makes an oath with us. Seven is the perfect number, the number of God and perfection and balance. Six is one can short of a 12 pack of beer. When you have the number six, it's short, it's deficient. It's the number of man, of sin, of incompleteness. And the rainbow flag used by the LGBT has six bands the rainbow God created and gave us as a promise has seven, the perfect number. I think that just that says a whole lot right there, just in that yeah, right. little fact itself. And I know I understand why the LGBT QYX WX plus whatever they call themselves, they are uh, they use that more as a sign of diversity. Every color is acceptable. If you're gay, bi, whatever, it's all. You know, we accept all the colors. It's, even Jesse Jackson back in the 70s and 80s had the Rainbow Coalition, and he was right. not referring back then to the LGBT sexual deviancy. I don't mind saying it's deviancy. I know a lot of times on radio shows you can't say words like that, but I'm on uh, I'm on the Virgin Most Holy, uh, Most Powerful radio station, so we can be a little more honest here and um, say things the way they really are. But the Rainbow Coalition used it to show diversity of black and white and d Democrat or Republican, or whatever, all the diversity of our culture. And but the rainbow's been used by people from all from the beginning of time for things. It's a beautiful symbol. Just just watch kids when they see a rainbow. I think this is one of the reasons the LGBT uses it because they're using it to groom our kids. They're grooming our kids to accept this lifestyle. They, they know they can't reproduce themselves, so they have to steal our kids away who are those of a man and a woman and they groom them with the rainbow and all these things to bring them into their lifestyle and culture. So the, ra the rainbow has been used all through history for a lot of different things. And because it is a beautiful symbol and it's a, a symbol of precision in God's creation, it's interesting now it's being used for the exact opposite 
to go contrary to God's morality and his precision, to, to promote and represent something that is completely opposite of what it actually is, the precision of God's beauty and nature. It's now being used to promote deviancy and exactly the contrary to how God has created man and woman to be in nature. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's uh, you, fi- you find that happening, you know, throughout history uh, where uh, terms are used uh, for the opposite. Uh, they use opposite terms. For example, when uh, Hitler invaded Poland, he was liberating Poland. You know, yes. and actually he was enslaving it. Right. I mean, it's yep. like it's funny how you always have those those flip terms of good things, you know, actually yep. being bad and bad being good. Yep. The Soviets had Pravda, which was their newspaper, which means truth. And it was an, actually an organ of deception and propaganda. There was nothing truthful about it. Yeah. So you've got to always be careful how you use words. For example, when I grew up, gay meant that you were happy and carefree and joyous. You had a gay lifestyle. And then you can watch movies today when the old actors refer to the, the gay. Uh, there's even a movie called The Gay Bachelor or something. And people today, re, they don't realize that that totally different meaning to the word 30, 40, 50 years ago. It meant carefree, having just not a care in the world, having joyful fun. And, but now it has a totally different meaning. And also, so unfortunately, the rainbow now, when it had such a beautiful and so many good and positive meanings, has now been turned into a symbol of unnatural lifestyle, un- more immoral lifestyle, one that God does not. In fact, he punished the earth because of that lifestyle. <laughs> if you think about it, the rainbow is a promise that he wouldn't destroy the earth. Why did he destroy the earth? Because of the very kind of things a rainbow represents now. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. What a, what a I never thought inversion yeah. twisted, you know. It's, uh, yeah. But that's how the devil does things. The devil always takes beautiful things and twists them into something that's grotesque. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um yeah, so, and, and you know, it, I guess it's a lot easier to, to march under those banners, right? <laughs> that you're for freedom and all, you know, all the, the positive things that are actually negative rather than actually yeah. stating what you're doing. You know, no one would get behind you. No, if, if people, if the average people knew what actually goes on beyond closed doors or now even in the streets and the parades, what's going on, um, they just I don't think that they would be as accepting of that lifestyle as they it's not all about rainbows and things there's a lot of deviancy to it right. and it's it's unfortunate and I see because the rainbow is such a beautiful symbol and kids love it and it's it, it, kids are drawn to things like rainbows they've always loved rainbows and it's a way I think like I said earlier of grooming our yeah. kids grooming them to accept this lifestyle because I even heard them chanting in a, a parade. I, I read it just this morning that we're coming after your kids. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a matter of branding too, right? Because uh, yeah, is, whenever yeah. you see a yellow M, you, yep. you think McDonald's, whenever you see a rainbow, no matter what, your mind automatically goes to the brand, you know? Yep, Exactly. Yeah. One of the things I'm, I'm pleased about, though, that I live in the Plymouth area and we, I, we've seen a lot less here this year than in years past in the Plymouth Canton area. Um, I think that has to do with a lot of conservatives have gotten sick and tired of this whole thing, having it shoved down their throat for the whole month of June. Everywhere you go, be proud of this and you have to accept it. You, don't, you can't just accept it. You have to celebrate it with us. And I don't celebrate it. I think it's a perversion of God's creation, and I think it's a sinful lifestyle, and it's a, it's a um, cancer in our society today. And I think we, we need to not be celebrating it. And I am happy that many, many conservatives and people of goodwill have pushed back. You look at Bud Light. They'll never recover, I don't think, from what, what happened to them because of their promotion of this. And also Target stores got stung really bad by this. And uh, the LA Dodgers are, are gonna have to live with that reputation of having those drag queens come out there on their, on their field. And I think that there's a lot of people pushing back and corporations are saying, wait, 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 let's be careful. 